Can this six inch pruning saw from Amazon take care of business? This is the Beihong six inch pruning saw and it runs on their 21 volt lithium batteries. Uh, without discussing much more, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at the features on this. And then we're going to use it and even compare it to one of its uh, industry counterparts. Okay, this is the, I believe it's pronounced Beihong. I do know it, it is a B as in boy, not a D as in dog. Uh, so I'm assuming Beihong, it wouldn't be Beihong. But anyway, uh, so uh, Beihong Mini Electric Chainsaw. I believe it has a six inch bar on it. It says uh, lithium 2.0 battery. Um, high quality motor. Um, I don't know what that means. Anyway, so we'll look, see what's in the box. By the way, we have opened it and charged the batteries. A couple of gloves. Those are not by any means any type of protective gloves. I look like just some uh, cotton type of gloves. A manual, which is pretty interesting. We'll read through that really quickly because it's very short. And uh, this is the chainsaw. So our curiosity is can you purchase a low cost chainsaw like this off of Amazon? and be able to do the things that you might do with a uh, better known name brand uh, chainsaw of the like, you know, of a you know, six, eight inch uh, chainsaw like it. Now, as we mentioned, uh, this is powered with lithium batteries and just so happens these are 21 volt batteries. We get two of them. I believe they're supposed to be two amp hour Yes, yeah, that's 36 watt hour. Uh, so that'd be more than two amp hour. I don't know which one of those is right, but regardless, uh, 21 volt max lithium. And by the way, they also showed up charged in the package, which I didn't think they could do that, but they were charged to get safety glasses. Um, looks like a oil container, an extra chain and uh, some sort of wrench. And then we also get a charger. So this charger here will plug directly into that battery right there. And that's how you charge these. So we know we're not gonna do any quick charging uh, with these batteries. And then you also get a Phillips head screwdriver. So here we have it, the six inch Beihong chainsaw, uh, 21 volt battery, another battery over there, charger. Uh, some type of oil dispenser looks like for the chain. I don't believe there's a, an oil container on there. And then this looks like that will loosen the bar nut on there. Uh, no tool on that end. We have a screwdriver here and then two extra chains and the manual as well as the uh, PPE back there. So let's go over this thing and just take a quick look before we put it to work. Uh, it says 19.2 feet per second uh, on this six inch chainsaw so we have this kind of guard that sits on here and spring loaded and lays down on the teeth there no idea of the size tooth or the pitch uh, again six inch or 15 millimeter or 15 centimeter bar we'll take that off in a moment look uh, looks like we have a trigger lock right here so push the button and then you can engage the trigger and this is just looks like a guard um, for your hand here we go with the battery in. So it looks like we have a brushed can motor in there providing the uh, so-called 19.2 feet per second. And we will uh, test to see how well it cuts here in just a moment. We pull this battery out of here. We do get a fuel gauge on the battery. If you hold it in, you will see the gauge. So. Uh, full green lights, uh, full four green lights on there. So it is fully charged. The length of this overall tool is about 15 inches without the battery on there. With the battery uh, about, about 16 inches long uh, from the tip of the saw all the way back to the battery. So not a very large tool and it's fairly light as well. The battery is very light, the tool is very light. So it doesn't weigh a whole bunch. So with the battery, two pounds, 10 and a half ounces. So not a very heavy tool at all, not even three pounds with the battery. Now let's go ahead and take off this cover. And by the way, that is a 10 millimeter nut that slides off. Looks like it just, uh, 
this pin slides into here and then the bar stud slides right through here and then this nut tensions that through that plastic cover to hold on uh, the blade and the bar. And so that pops off. So there's basically your tensioning pin, which looks pretty weak. Not gonna hold a lot of force there and definitely not an oiling system on here. So, so that stud goes between the bar and then the pin lines up on that bottom hole. So then ensure that's all the way on there. Make sure that guard's lifted up so that slides all the way down in seats. I want to go through the manual really quick. Again, it's the Beihong 21 volt max, six inch cordless chainsaw. Uh, and by the way, you can email the CEO directly at CEO at Beihong.us. So glad to see that. Um, components and specifications. Several things on here, I don't know what they mean by that, by cover knob or um, protective baffle. Anyway, a um, couple of items on there, not sure what they are, but here's the quick uh, how to use. Um, use a screwdriver to move the pin forward. They're talking about that alignment pin. Uh, install the chain guide plate. Um, they're not calling it a bar, they're calling, calling it a guide plate. Uh, align the holes to attach the guide plate. Make sure the chain's on the right way. Align the bolts with a screwdriver and tighten the chain clockwise. Um, uh, pretty self-explanatory use, uh, install the side cover and tighten the screws clockwise. So I'm assuming they're meaning the, the nut and the, the stud here, right here on the tool or on the chainsaw, then unlock the security lock to start the machine. Um, and then it says, again, align the bolts with a screwdriver and tighten the chain clockwise. I'm assuming since they are holding a little bottle, that looks kind of like this, not really, but a little bit. Uh, looks like you're supposed to be oiling the chain. So I'm assuming that you should be oiling the chain manually before use and we'll be sure to do that. And then over here it talks about a new chain is easy to be stretched and that uh, you need to make sure that you have that tightened. Um, but it says pull down the chain to reveal three chain guide teeth. I'm assuming they're meaning you should be able to pull this down and see three guide teeth, but it shouldn't be loose enough where you're seeing more than three guide teeth. I think it's probably almost impossible to do, but regardless. Um, and that's about it for, uh, for the manual, other than it talks about uh, the maintenance and the warranty, and it talks about uh, the things that they're covering um, that, that's maintenance and not maintenance, or warranty and not warranty. So the warranty period is 12 months, but, and that's interesting because it says 12 months, but on the box here, it says 400 days. 30-day uh, money-back guarantee and 400 days warranty. So I don't know which is which. I don't know if it's a 400-day or if it's a 365-day or whatever, or 12 months, uh, whatever that may be. Anyway, and it says uh, the warranty period of this product is 12 months, but does not include the following points. Any natural wear and tear or overload work. So in other words, if you're overloading tool, they're not going to cover that. Uh, damage caused by lack of routine maintenance. Well, what is routine maintenance? They haven't really explained that. Um, improper use and other man-made damage. What does that mean? Uh, products modified or disassembled by illegal maintenance personnel. Who is illegal person maintenance personnel? Uh, damage caused by severe impact. Now, obviously, if you're dropping this from a 100-foot building, I get it. And then uh, use of non-genuine accessories and batteries. I'm assuming that maybe you can buy accessories. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so it looks like they're really limiting themselves from any type of warranty claims. Um, so, you know, I just want to be, be clear on this, that when uh, they're kind of that, that open on this, I'm not sure what they are going to, care, to cover. And then they're even saying the optimum temperature of charging a battery pack is 68 to 77 degrees. So a nine degree temperature swing, that's the window you have to be in uh, for charging appropriately that's not going to happen here in florida i can tell you that uh, but regardless i just wanted to cover that with you before we use the saw now i understand uh, that this m18 hatchet is quite a bit bigger uh, than this little uh, Beihong uh, deal and i get it i uh, probably should be comparing this to the m12 milwaukee but we don't have that one this is the smallest one that we have and it's a it's an eight inch bar and chain um, but just wanted to show the kind of the commons and the differences of these two units and, and how they compare. Uh, but did want to point that out to at least show the difference on 
uh, what you know this size would do versus this size. So we're going to take this out and use it, and then we'll bring in um, the other tool back here to actually compare a little bit on speed and uh, and some of the items on how they work. Okay, we're going to start out with this little branch here. So it looks like about a two inch diameter, and then we're going to roll over to this one here. It looks like uh, I don't know three and three quarter inch diameter so still well within the capacity of the saw now since it didn't tell us how to oil it i'm just going to take a little of my bar and chain oil okay so i'm going to cut this little what do we say two inch So it's actually not terrible. Okay, so cutting that was not a real issue. You couldn't go really fast, but it still didn't do all that bad. Let's go into this uh, three and a half, three and three quarter inch diameter. So I'm not pushing terribly hard because I want to make sure that this thing will actually cut and not just try to kill it. I'm going to make uh, three more passes here. Looks like the battery is still fully charged, but I've got nothing. Maybe some type of overload protection. Went ahead and swapped batteries. Still nothing. While that's cooling, we'll use the Milwaukee M18 hatchet. Significantly faster. I know this is a bigger saw, but still within the voltage. And at least uh, on the Milwaukee, you do have some bucking spikes where I can actually cut and then use that to dig into the log. Really helps, especially when you're one handed. All right, so it's working again. We'll make uh, three more cuts. Cut out again, and I'm not really pushing that hard. Okay, one more time, let's try to finish this.
So let's quickly dive into the pricing on this. This is a $70 or $80, I think it's $79, maybe $69, but let's call it an $80 saw all in and you get two extra blades, you get two batteries, uh, you get the charger and a couple of the wrenches and the saw. Um, does it cut? Yes. Does it cut it in its capacity of you know six inches? No, not really. I, I think it cuts fine at that two inch range, but once we got up to a four inch range, which is well within the capacity of the of the bar and chain, but it just doesn't have the power to cut through there, at least in any certain type of speed. And you could see when we compared it uh, to the other M18 saw that there was quite a disparity between the two. Now I get it, probably looking at a more professional saw uh, versus this would be more of a DIY or a homeowner's, but that's what we had to compare it to. Just wanted to kind of show you of what a saw that actually has the capacity and the power to cut through the wood that it's supposed to. Uh, nowhere in the manual did it actually state the capacity of the saw or what you should be sawing. But let's just take that, that two inches, the max. Well, my problem with that is now your window of what it will cut is really small. So you're talking about, you know, what that one to two inch range, because if you're cutting less than one inch, and I'm just gonna say, well, get a pair of lopping shears or get a, you know, a, a sawzall or a cat hacksaw or a one-handed recip saw, with a pruning blade in it and it's going to be as quick or quicker and not as dangerous just to be honest with you um, and in fact i'd probably lean toward the lopping shears because they're much faster just cut through and and you're done uh, so again if you're looking at that real small window of one to two inch you know uh, pieces of limbs then it's really not you know doing a lot so you're going to go to this every now and then and it's not going to do everything you need it to do and then you're just going to be frustrated so even though you're only paying 80 bucks for this still you're not able to use it where you think you should so that's our thoughts on this i, I get it that you know i saw like the m18 hatchet it's going to run you like 279 which by the way we reviewed that if you want to check out that review we'll have it in the description uh and in, even the m12 hatchet which again you know half the voltage of this uh that's going to run you about 200 dollars for the bare tool so i get it you know stepping up to one of those is a big step in money but at the same time they cut well within their capacity of the bar and chain and they have the power to do it so check it out if you want to we'll have a link in the description also keep track of us on instagram facebook twitter and even TikTok. and if you don't mind would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already and by all means if you hated our little chainsaw from amazon video then give us a thumbs down but would you let us know in the comments why have a great day keep smiling